Hello, hi, it's Liz here and today I'm back to do my four playing cards, the prompts provided by Create with Scrimping Mommy Facebook group and um, before I go on to do the cards I thought I would show you what I'm going to keep my cards in. I found this old um, ring binder book, um, it hadn't been used so um, yeah. So it's now been given a, a new cover, um, some hu huge big Alice in Wonderland playing cards, which are actually postcards, and a few uh, bits and bobs, and some stamped, you're nothing but a pack of cards. And inside I've got Altered Cards Project, and I've stuck my first two weeks in, uh, gave it a little bit of a stamp and a washi tape and put the cards in. So that was week one, winter, and this is week two, butterflies, and obviously week three will go on the next page. Um, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that. I decided to just crack on with a book and somewhere to keep them because they were going to be kicking about the room and getting a bit lost. So. <laughs> thought no it's time to put them somewhere so this week's prompt is birds so I have my little bits and bobs here for my birds I'm going to do two on the camera and I've already finished two off because they're a bit samey and I didn't want to do all four um, on the camera so I've got some rub-ons here um, I'll show you. I've got one piece of this sort left. Um, they are 49 and market rub-ons. They're absolutely great. Nothing like the old rub-ons from years ago. They're beautiful and they all stick down, no bother. And I just use them loads. So the first bit is rub-ons. So we're just going to move the little bits to the side and you will just place the rub on and you get, of course, the lolly stick. And we just do what it says on the tin and rub. You can tell that they've taken because it changes colour slightly. And what I do is just peel just a little bit off. Now they might not stick quite as well to this because I put a tiny bit of white gesso over the card just to take away the shine. So that's fine, these little bits will just come away. And you can see I'm left with some dots and I'll maybe just, some dots, some paint splatters. <laughs> And I think I might just try and get them down there. Yep. Good. And then we've got just the tiniest bit of tissue. This is from a Tim Holtz. I don't know the name because I don't have a packaging anymore. But it's a, a roll of tissue paper. Um, and I'm just going to put that down. And I'll just use my glue stick and I think probably just down the bottom there somewhere. Just to add another little bit of texture before our bird just gets put centre stage. The birds have come from this book which I found in a charity shop. It's Thorburn's Birds. Um, it's a great book because each panel, you can see I've used quite a lot, each panel you get, well you can see, about six, ten sometimes, depending on the size of the birds, but um, it's a brilliant book to cut birds from, so if you ever see it in the charity shop or in the thrift shop or whatever, I just blew the things to the side there, <laughs> he flew away, Whoa. Woo! Right. Be careful. Watch what you're doing. 
Right, let's get this bird down. Just be careful with his little legs there. And we can just pop him on there. Like that. And then we'll just do the same with this one. Rub. Now, I don't want you thinking that I've accidentally cut off this little chap's leg. Now, he's only got one leg. Because I didn't. His other leg, you can see, is actually just tucked up underneath. So I wondered why that would be, and I asked Mr. Google. And Mr. Google said, kind of obvious answer, that seagulls stand on one leg to keep their feet warm. They tuck each leg underneath inside their downy bellies, tummies, <laughs> and it keeps their feet warm. And they take it in turns to have each foot. They put one foot up and then they put the other foot up. And it keeps them warm. So there you go. I also learned, this is like fun facts about seagulls, they're, these are all gulls and terns, I believe. Um, to watch I don't take his one leg off. And uh, yes, you sometimes see them and they're stamping the ground. And that's because they're trying to mimic the rain. So that the worms will come up thinking it's raining and <laughs> the seagulls will eat them. So I'm going to add a little word. This is from Small Talk, Tim Holtz, Ideology. And I'm going to put Be Amazed on this one. And I'm going to put Be Brave on this one. And then I will show you my other two completed cards. I've got Stay Curious and Stay Strong. And it's a set of gulls and terns. And I'm really pleased, really simple. Rub on a little bit of tissue and a bird cut from a book, and I think they are just and a little bit of white gesso just to take away the the shine. What do you think? I think I'm liking them. Really nice, quick project. A little bit of messy time, a little bit of crafty time. Let's get our book. And let's see what they might look like on the page. And I will just stamp week three. I've put week one winter at the bottom and then I changed it week two butterflies because these cards were too big. I thought to get the butterflies along the bottom. And here we are. Yes. They look cool on the page. I'll do a bit of stamping, do my heading, add the date. Always good to add a date to your project so that when you look back, I've just got a little date stamp. In fact, when I turned it to 2022, that's the last year on the date stamp. So, need to buy a new one at the end of the year. <laughs> there we are. What do you think? pleased with them. I like how each two are facing each other. That's why I'm out of sequence with the numbers, but that doesn't matter. I like the two birds facing each other. And I might just keep his tail. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep his tail. There's no need to cut it off when you're sticking it in the book. 
Okay, so thanks for joining me today. That was short and sweet. And um, if you've enjoyed that, a thumbs up would be great. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.